Uh, okay, everyone, welcome to the fourth edition of Pirk's View. Today with me here, I have Dea Fetiu and Raisa Nikshishi from the Debate Center in Pristina. Hi. Hi. Hello. I can see the excitement. <laughs> We're very excited. Yeah. You know, like you're working at the debate center and such, and I really like what you've been doing. Like, by the way, I've no, I've heard about the debate center for a long while now, since I know Dea, of course, he has mentioned it to me a couple of times. And I just wanted to say this, like, whenever you hear something cool happen in Kosovo, it's always a Pristina you doing it. Like, legit, <laughs> everything cool happens in Pristina. But, yeah, but it, it's a big city, I guess. It's a big yeah. city and it's the main city, so probably it's going to be in Pristina. I, I'm but, but you have Toku Fest there, so yes, balance, true. please. I mean, we have Pirk's view in prison, so yeah, that's the biggest thing yet. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. Like, <laughs> I've never heard the prison Ali design a glove that translates sign language. These are things only you only see in Pristina. But, but I, I wanted, not, yeah. Not necessarily in Pristina. I could be a prisoner. You don't know. I'm not. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and that is something that I didn't know about. But speaking of debate center, I really have to to tell you guys you have been doing a great job. Like the online discussions you guys have been hosting during the pandemic have been amazing. I personally take part in, I think, almost every one of the discussions. And I think you can confirm. And it's been amazing because it gives you something to do like during this pandemic. Because I feel like every dis after every discussion, I've learned something new. Like legit, uh, I've either developed a skill, I've developed confidence, or I've learned something new that I haven't known about. Like, what's your experience with Debate Center? How did you guys like start like working at the Debate Center? Would you care to elaborate? Yes. Uh so you want to start? Yeah, I can start okay. then we continue. <laughs> so we started debating first at 2018. Uh, me and Raisa were part of a project from Debate Center where they learned us debating. And then uh, we developed a very nice friendship with all the Debate Center team. So when we turned 18, we asked for internships from them and they took us as interns. Uh, we want to thank them for giving us that chance. And so far, it's been awesome. Uh, we've learned so much from this internship and um, we had a very nice experience working with them. Yes, and especially the last uh, activities we're doing during the pandemic, they've been amazing and very helpful for everyone. And they were amazing and great. Uh, especially the people we met during those um, during those activities. And fun fact, me and Aran met through those activities and we never met before live, just Aran and Dia. So this is our first time talking live. Like that, that's the thing I love about like these activities. Like I remember the only interactions we'd have were when I opened my mic and just asked, hey, can I have a word? Like, can I speak? Can I have something to discuss about? <laughs> <laughs> and we actually, we kind of met like before this, you guys hosted a debate for our school actually, which to be honest, I, I joined last minute. Like I remember you had to deal with me for like 15 minutes because, because I had some technical issues and I, had, I hadn't filled the form. But like still, <laughs> I love the idea of debate center. Like I really love it because there are a lot of teenagers out there, like including you guys, including me, who are really good at debating. For example, like the debate center has uh, inspired not just our school's debating team, sort of, because uh, we hosted a debate. I don't know if you know this, but it went in the in kind of the style you guys do. Like I opened the Discord server, managed managed it. Like uh, I think it's the British. Uh, like how how how's that? Yeah, British parliamentary style. Yeah. yeah, British parliamentary style. Like we use that method, and it's purely inspired from like debate center. And also, you're hearing this first, the online discussions that Debate Center hosted actually have somewhat inspired this podcast. Because, yeah, I actually told Raisa about this the other day. Yes. Because, like, hearing... Very excited. Because hearing yeah, you guys... We made such an impact. <laughs> like, hearing you guys, like, host these online discussions with these amazing, like, guests and being 
being able to communicate, you know, being able to share your opinions and your thoughts, like while having your camera open, while having your microphone open, without, you know, feeling like scared or feeling discomfort, I think just inspired me. And one night I just went, okay, I've been thinking about this for a while. I, I want to start my own podcast, so I just will. And this is the story of Pierre's view, like in a nutshell. And you're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. I've had a lot of good feedback. Fun fact, you guys are the first guests from like another city, not from prison. So yeah, you should feel <laughs> you should feel privileged. You see, you've only taken cool people people from prison until now. So wow. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we don't have a debate center, but we do have like certain activities. Like we've had Dokufest, as you mentioned, we've had Ngongfest, and I think those are the two main activities you associate prison on by. Yes, yes. Dokufest is amazing. Like you I know, love, uh, that's that's really my favorite summer all... activity, yeah. and we hope <laughs> we hope that this summer is not cancelled. So yeah, I'm with you there because I worked at Dokufest like last year, and it was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. Like I got to work in a cinema, like. Could you imagine working in a cinema, even as a volunteer? Like, I'd go work for two shifts just because I loved it, you know? I heard it was tiring a lot for, for yeah, the volunteers. Yeah, I heard that from Denisa too. It, it was pretty tiring, but... It so. was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Like, last summer, I think, was one of the best, like, summers of my life. Not because I only worked at DocuFest, like, Dea, you know about this, but I also applied to go f to participate in the European Parliament in France. And fun fact, this is where we met. Like we live two yes, cities apart. Yes. Like we we'll, we we'll live two cities apart, and we met in France. <laughs> I, ha I have I have this thing about uh, EYP that they always mentions it, and and I always like uh, I I I don't like that she men mentions it always because I never never participated, and it's one of the only activities I don't I didn't participate ever. So. I, because I like to participate in everything. So basically, if I don't participate in something, I don't like it. Like, <laughs> because I, didn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> you have no idea how big France was for me. Like, that was the first time I held a public speech. Like, you were, an edit you were a photographer, like, with the media team. Like, I think you remember this. I, ha I held the closing speech for my uh, committee. And also, like, yes. we had debates, and it was amazing. Like, I remember, yes, like... Speech in my first session was also a closing speech to make the remarks and stuff like that because I'm the best at it. Also, a debate I always love to keep the two last speeches, the government and opposition whip, because I think it's what I do best to, to like conclude the whole debate or the whole um, work that my committee has done in UIP or something like that. Yeah. So closing speeches are fun, <laughs> and you have to make it emotional. So here oh, I yeah. am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I was the sarcastic one in my committee. Yeah, what was your topic about, though? Uh, it was about the uh, uh, technological waste, like electronic waste, to be exact. Like, there, you have, okay. you have a lot of experience in AYP. Like, I remember, like, being a first-timer, I legit knew nothing. And I'm just seeing you talking to these guys, this the president, the king, as he was so-called, the prince, yeah. the queen. <laughs> like, I was just being, I remember being shocked. Like we went, we came to like to this uh, palace in Severn, and we had no idea like where we were going, what was happening, and just seeing you working, like organizing the team and such, I was like, wow, she she is one of us because like when we were in France, the, the only type of people you meet are French people, and seeing you work, I'm like, wow, she's one of us and she's doing great. Like you have no idea how it felt. Uh, it was only my uh, fourth session, I guess, that time in France, so. After the first session, you gain that experience, so it's like the same. The first is different, the other ones are like the same. Especially, and the first one being as an official in UIP is a very different thing, which was my second session as well. So in Saven, I was a media team member for the second time, that's why I sounded so familiar <laughs> with the traditions and stuff like that. But when we applied to the first one with Dafina, another one of my colleagues at Debate Center, um, we didn't know anything about it. We just came to Brisbane in Dayola and stayed for four days. Raisa was supposed to come there too, but she did. 
<laughs> That's why I know she difficulties. <laughs> you have no idea how confident she was. Like, I remember just being in the corner, like doing energizers, and I just see Dale just going, Yeah, come on. I'm like, Wow. Like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm responsible for the energizers at the big center as well. So. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all the advisors and mostly the ones they do in EYP, so they're very fun. She's a really positive person. Like, legit, like, you're one of the most positive people in EYP, like, I'll give you this. She oh, is, she, she's, very, she's like a sunshine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Blushing. She radiates positivity. Like, that, like, that's the thing, you're a media team member, like, two times. What I'm interested in, like, what well, what was your first session like? Well, like where was it held, and did you apply like as a as a delegate? Like, of course you had to apply as a delegate, right? Yes, my first session was in Prizren as a delegate uh, in 2018 as well, where we went from debate center, you know, because they they sh shared the link with us in our group in Facebook, and literally I know YP because of debate, so I know like almost. These two years of my life have been almost around yes. debate. Every every one of our activities has been around debating. So uh, we applied in Prizren there. Uh, we had an amazing chair. I don't know if you guys in Southern had the luck to have chairs like that because um, I didn't spend much time with your chairs, but um, I think the ones in Prizren were cooler. <laughs> and uh, she were was like notifying us for every session and then uh, with another one of my friends we applied in Vyora the first time as officials. So in we Albania. were in Albania in 2019 in Vyora as media team members. Then a week, a week after that we went on Strasbourg with Janisa and two other girls as delegates and then in Saben. So uh, my other sessions has, have been cancelled due to the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. I got accepted in two sessions. But she she yeah. she she had to go to Vienna for the the session, the next session, so it was cancelled and now I joke about it a lot. <laughs> I play I play I play Vienna Billy Joe from Billy Joe uh, every time I can around her. <laughs> like just to annoy she her angry because because she couldn't get to go <laughs> yeah very angry <laughs> like that's the thing i'm still in touch from with like a few french people from eyp like i'm thinking about applying at the new strasbourg session this year in yeah. october because fun fact that's yes. when i turn 18 and i can make my own decisions <laughs> Nice. Yes, like, but but you don't have your own money, so basically that's cancelled. <laughs> well, this that's the thing. Like for France, for like the last year, the session I attended, I worked like at Dokufest, and I remember saving money. Like I think it was like what five months prior, and I remember having like a good amount of money that I spent like for France. Like my parents and my relatives helped with a few things, like with the plane tickets and such. But I remember paying for the session on my own paying for our airbnbs because we stayed like two more days in like france and i remember just like paying for most of the things on my own i was like wow this is great because first of all i get to pay for my own stuff like i i can do this more because i can afford it like that's the fun thing about it like other than the plane tickets nothing was like really expensive you know other than the experience like i don't know if you if you heard like in the episode where we talked about this like i remember being lost in strasbourg and we we missed our flix bus and we used the tram to get back to the main train station i remember seeing you and dia by the way like in the in the town square like from our from the oh, yeah from your tram <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i remember waving like crazy like being stressed out like fully stressed out, like oh my god, we missed our flex bus. We have a flight in like a two hours, and just seeing there and Dia just waving like crazy, like hey, we're going through hell, but at least I might be positive about it. <laughs> and, like, and yeah, like uh, like that's the first time I really got to travel like outside of Kosovo, and knowing you guys or seeing your stories, I've seen you guys travel a lot. Like I get I get jealous seeing you guys travel a lot. <laughs> no, you do. You you I do. <laughs> you do. Like Raisa, Ra Ra like, what's the favorite place you've been to, like traveling wise? Um, probably Vienna. 
<laughs> <laughs> you had to. I do like Vienna a lot, and I also like Budapest a lot. But, huh? but Vienna mostly because I was there for like two months, like and two and I months. got to. Yes, I, my mom used to work in Vienna, so basically, uh, she had an apartment there, and I had the opportunity to stay there for two months. And uh, basically, I I was there alone. I I was visiting Vienna alone for two months, and it was amazing going down the streets and meeting new people and just approaching people. It was just like in movies, <laughs> but it was amazing. So I I wish I can do that again. Because you know it's very very big, and and you can do every uh, everything, in in like two months, but there's still left. Like imagine <laughs> being like this is the fifth time I'm talking about this, but I went in France for a week and I'm, I I was astounded. You're in Vienna for two months. Two I I months. was I was. I, I have this thing that I was in uh U.S. for like two weeks, and I mentioned it every time i can so basically it's it's like i lived there but i was only for two weeks yeah, because it was like... such an amazing experience and it, and it stuck there in my mind and this... then i i always mention it and people make fun of me <laughs> for mentioning us 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 america no <laughs> but it's not like that it's it's just it was an amazing experience was this a part of the yale young global scholars by the way or was it just yes. Like you mentioned this to me when I asked, like, what sort of activities you participated in, and when you mentioned this, like, I had some prior knowledge about it, but then investigating, I guess, or doing research, like, more into it, I was like, wow, wow, she took. It is. It is. It was very a very a very nice experience, and I I loved it. There were a lot of I think in my session there were. Um, like 80 people from all around the world, mostly Americans, like 40% Americans, but uh, from everywhere I had, I got to meet new people and it was my first time in a session like that, basically meeting people from around the world. And we, we are still in touch. I have friends in Japan and Tokyo and Korea and everywhere and it's amazing like it sounds it sounds weird to have friends in such a far away yeah places. It, but it's like normal because we live in like the the technology age as yes. as it's called like how did you get to apply for the Yale Young Global Scholars session um I found out like a year before because one of my friends or my Instagram followers went there so after a year i got reminded i don't know how but i applied like two hours before a deadline like i finished my application two hours before a deadline and i had like two days prior to that to finish all my documents and there were a lot of documents they required and stuff so basically i did that plus i needed to make sure that i had financial aid because it costed a lot of money yeah i saw about that like that's really expensive like yes, i have to plus, say plus the tickets plus the extra money so basically it costed a lot but fortunately i had i had uh, companies and foundations that were kindly uh <laughs> to fund all my uh, trip expenses so basically, I did not pay a lot myself. Yeah, we're very lucky for these foundations yes. <laughs> for some of our travels. That's why believe the in us. such activities are is like the best way to travel because it's the cheapest way. So True. because there's like always one foundation or any ministry or something that gives money to the youth contributing to the country. And we go there, have fun, but we contribute kind of. to. Yeah, our I mean, like. <laughs> Like, there is fun contributing. Like, I remember when we came from France, the entire city knew we went to represent our country. Like, legit, the yeah, entire city. Knew. Represent, yeah. We were like eight people, or how much? Yeah, we were eight people from Prizren. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. Like, you mentioned, like, applying two hours before the deadline. I remember Janissa texted me at 11 uh, p.m. 
and it was one hour before the deadline. Like I legit had fifty six minutes till yes. till twelve. And she and she just sent me the link and she said apply. I'm like I haven't thought about this. She's like you'll think about it later. Just apply or you'll you'll miss it and be pissed. Yeah. And like that's yeah. the thing. When I saw that I was accepted, I was like wow. First of all, like I had to absorb it and like I ha I didn't tell anyone about this. My family didn't know. My friends like some of them knew about it, but I had I hadn't mentioned it at all because I wasn't confident enough that I'd go there. And when I got accepted, I was like. Wait, what? I'm going to France. I remember just going to my dad. He was sitting downstairs and I went like, "Okay, dad, I have to tell you something. You're gonna be pissed about it, but don't make a big deal." Of it. And he just legit thought I had something to confess. Like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> and then I just said, "Okay, I'm going to France." And he just said, "What? <laughs> no, you're not going to France." Like, I I had to talk to all of my relatives to co to to help convince my dad. Yeah. Because at the time I was still like sixteen. It was right after my sixteenth birthday. Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like seeing like these, I'll say teens. I'll use the word teens. Like contributing this much. Like having like these amazing experiences. It's just amazing to be honest. Because I see teens from like all around the world developing like new innovations, participating in like important events. And by the way, Raisa. How does how does like one think about this? Like I legit needed to ask you. Like, did you just wake up one day and thought, okay, today I'll design a glove? <laughs> how did this happen? No, it, it didn't go like that. Um, basically, the story behind it is that um, I was in this uh, academy, coding academy. It's called J Coders Academy. I think they're in prison too. Yeah, we and... do, we have a, a J Coders Academy. <laughs> Yes, and basically I was uh, one of their first students and uh, they told me about this competition that happens in Albania every year and it's the most prestigious uh, ICT competition in Albania and in Balkans overall. Uh, it's called ICT Awards and they give awards every year for different categories of ICT uh, inventions or projects or whatever uh, and i applied for ict rising star of the year because i was 15 at the time and a rising was, star uh, yes it was a it was a, an award for kids basically and um i i started researching about what the world needs mm -hmm. and and usually when you think of people in need, you think of people with disabilities. And um, while I was thinking of people with disabilities, I I noticed that people uh, that can't hear uh, are the most uh, discriminated. And usually you don't hear people that made something for them. Basically, you know about robotic arms, you have books for people who can see, and there are a lot of innovations about other disabilities, not yeah. about people that can't hear. So basically, that was my main focus, uh, to focus on them because they don't have that much of attention as other uh, people with other sicknesses or disabilities have. Uh, and when I when I tried to research what they need, I came across an MIT project that was made at the time and basically modified that in my way and uh, made the glove that you mentioned. That's the glove. For the, yes, for that, for the public, it's a glove that translates sign language into a spoken language and you can understand them. So basically what what that does is help them communicate with us and uh when when they speak to us because most of the people don't know sign language because it's it's not a common language to learn uh and it's yeah. uh, and it's always different in every state because they have they have their own language like albanian american sign language serbian sign language like there's there's Every every state has another sign language, so it would be kind of impossible to learn sign language. Yeah, and, I agree. And 
yes um that 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 glove was a prototype of what i wanted to do and uh implement that in every state uh probably for free because that was the goal but um it has been like now it has been like three years from that uh i did not do any other projects but the glove had a lot of um interests but what happened is that during those three years uh someone uh started selling them it's interesting because the, uh, when i was when i was 15 and saw the mit project the even the mit project that i modified wasn't wasn't even in the market so basically yeah. um what happened is that i did not get enough of attention for funding and uh people and companies that could fund my project and later on the project was funded for someone else <laughs> but and was sold i think uh, from a from an african if if i'm not mistaken. i think i'm correct but like yes. that's the thing i remember hearing about this like it it happened when you were 15 like i remember hearing about this like a girl designed a glove that reads like translate sign language and i remember telling one of my friends oh, like wow like we're 15 we're in ninth grade like i was personally in ninth grade and i was like my biggest problem right now is whether i should ask my crush to prom or not and this girl over here is making a glove that translates sign language like i i would make a sarcastic joke about this like oh my god people could just type or give like a sarcastic comment but legit i'm impressed I loved it. Like you sent me a few videos, like presenting it and seeing how the glove works. I, I I remember like watching it. I was like, wow, like this is an amazing idea. Like people yeah, need this. The thing is, the thing is that I know that people can just type, but it's 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 giving a voice to people who cannot speak. Yeah. And it's and it's making them a little less uh, discriminated. Uh, yes, discriminating, and it helps them feel normal and feel like everyone else because i'm because that glove gives them a voice of their own because because uh, the, that's how they survive on daily taking notes giving people notes communicating with notes but if that glove if you have if you had the not prototype version of that glove because it wasn't that uh that good <laughs> because i was 15. um she says it wasn't that good speak. but it was amazing <laughs> it was a prototype basically it wasn't fully formed as i as i as i thought of it but if you had that glove glove in the fully for, formed version they could speak and do all activities normally so basically that was the point like this glove legit like thinking more about this and i love how he described it to be honest like giving like people a voice because they yes. can't hear, like, I love the way it worked with, like, uh, sign language and such, like, you'd make, for example, you'd mimic a shape, for example, like, this or whatever, like, it would, like, translate it into, like, uh, words into the computer. Yes. What I want to see is playing video games with that glove. How fast can you make shapes? Um, I, I actually, I thought about uh, making, making a, a version of that for video games. Uh, uh, one year that I went in Dokutak, I think, two years ago, uh, when Dokutak started being held in Pristina, um, there was this guy that had this, this amazing glove that did not... I, I was attracted to gloves back then. <laughs> Basically, I, I, only saw, I only saw gloves. Um, and... Uh, he he had this glove for music, and it made it a music instrument. So basically, he played instruments in the air without playing any instruments. And I started thinking about playing video games and stuff. And it's it's kind of been a been a plan, been a a pro in a project that I thought about it, but never I did it because. I didn't have the time should and stuff. Should I ask somebody's going to steal your idea here? <laughs> you shouldn't it's have okay. said about that. It's okay mm -hmm. if, if actually, if someone, someone wants to do it and has, and has 
uh, the opportunity to do it. Go ahead. Make the world a better place. I need money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, if you're able to find someone who's willing to sponsor, like, through this, I'd be glad to have known that yes. you, you, get, you gave out your word. But, like, that's the thing. You guys, like, are doing these wonderful things. Like, for experience, yeah, but you also contributed. Like, you, just thinking about how much you can contribute from, like, one small, like, yeah. I won't say small, but one, like, invention. Like, you were 15 and you made a glove. Yeah. Like imagine when, imagine you, when you're 20 and you make two gloves. <laughs> you make two gloves, sure. <laughs> but like that's the thing. Like you're a genius, by the way, for for doing that. I remember seeing the video. You were 15. Like seeing little Larissa presenting and like, wow, she's 15 and she has like this whole like cyborg glove thing, like. <laughs> It Wire. looked awesome. It yeah. had a lot of wires. That's why it looked awesome. <laughs> it looked it all. It looked badass, to be honest. I, I... It it was very homemade. That's that's why be, that's why uh, cables used to show and all of that stuff because there were a lot of homemade components and that made it look awesome. But the plan after the prototype, it it had to look like a a normal glove. No, no wires, no, not anything. So basically, you could you could get away with it without knowing that it was a glove. It was a glove. So if it was skin colored, it would look normal, like the hand. No, like so I, that was the last part of the prototype. I like that you have this planned actually, because like when you ask most teenagers, like what do you think you're gonna do? Like what are you gonna get by? Like. You don't hear them saying, okay, I'm going to do a project, I'm working on something. You just hear, eh, I'm, I'm going out and such. Like, I, I've been to this party, like, last week. Like, when I saw about that, I was like, wow. Me two years later. <laughs> <laughs> like, at, at least you have, like, this huge flex. Like, what did you do, what did you do when you were 15? I designed a glove. Like, beat that. Like, I made a glove. But, like... <laughs> You are also like a member of these, like At Atomi, was it, and uh, Mensa, right? The, yes, the Atomi the, group. The, the uh, intellig the intelligence uh, groups that that gather people with high uh, IQs around the world. It's Mensa, and in Kosovo, it's Atomi. Like I heard about this, like only smart people. Like there are a lot of smart people there. I wouldn't know. You do. So please talk about it. <laughs> Because I want to um, know. I, I think that Atome uh, made a lot of impact on me. First of all, because it introduced me to debate. And second, because uh, it told me that I have the power to make everything <laughs> work and I can do anything. So basically, it, it gave me a lot of confidence in the good way and not in the bad way. Uh, and I think that uh it's it was a very good opportunity uh to start and realizing myself my self worth and doing a lot more things um and meeting a lot of smart people so basically all my friendships start from atomi and debate um i i was introduced to debate in atomi institute uh, and from there i i went on debating and it it's i honestly i think it's a life changing experience because all of the activities we did from the first time we were introduced uh to debate were uh debating and visiting places for debating and also the thoughts we had we have after learning to debate are very different when you don't know how to debate yeah. basically you think you you see a thing different and you think of two sides every time, not just your own personal opinion. And and it's very, this is one downside because it's very hard to know what you're feeling about the thing because you you start thinking of the two sides of pros and cons. And you're like, wow, where time. do I stand? Yes, yes, <laughs> and, and, you, and you stand nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. So basically you're in the middle every time. <laughs> but it, it is a life, ex uh, a life, a changing experience honestly like this is what i love mostly about like debating like i like when this pandemic is over i want to come to one of you guys debates like i'm openly saying this like i want to see how it's held 
because like when we held like our debate with the school it was in collaboration with our school and i just i i like the way it was organized and i you guys had like a tournament like these past couple of days i remember i i tuned into it i, I didn't watch the whole thing but i watched a few parts of it and i really loved it like it was it was amazing to ho to host a debating tournament in the middle of a pandemic completely online and to have like that much coordination that much accuracy <laughs> it was amazing to be honest like from a viewer's okay. standpoint it was amazing like can you give Thank you and yeah and, it's, and props to the team for for making it work during the 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 tournament because it was hard making all things sync with each other but it it went good it i think it went good yes like um, we have a great team by the way so that's yeah. that's why <laughs> And also, this tournament um, had to be held like live, not in the online version. And it's much fun when it's live. So you should come to one of our tournaments. To be honest, I will. I will. <laughs> well, the next ones are only for university students, but we're hoping that um, by the end of the year or next year, we're, we will be able to hold another one for high schoolers. Even though next year you'll be an university student. Yeah, like I just graduated today. Like I legit just graduated. Yes, we all graduated yes, today. We all graduated. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, we, we, we legit graduated. Oh, yes, happy <laughs> graduation day. I guess the twentieth of May. <laughs> We're graduating online. <laughs> well, I mean, I've I've saw so, I've seen like these stories of people like. I remember one like teacher held a graduation party in Minecraft. I was gonna mention that. That was amazing. <laughs> like, I, I saw a lot of servers they made uh, for Minecraft graduations. They're very funny. This is an idea, a podcast in Minecraft. <laughs> a very good idea. Yes. <laughs> well, it I... get uh, we're hoping though we can hold our graduation ceremony after this ends. We are really hoping that it will happen. Also, the prom. Uh, even <laughs> though I thought I was hating prom, I was too lazy to like think about the dress and the stuff like that. Now that it's like cancelled or postponed, I don't know. <laughs> Same. I'm really sad. <laughs> like, like, so I, I wasn't hating it. Like I, I was, I, th I thought it was very boring and very time consuming and money consuming when I, I could travel with that money. But now I just want a fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> like I think, yeah. Like it, like I'll mention France again. It was an excuse to wear a fancy suit. Whoever yes. saw me in France and whoever has seen my uh, pic <laughs> pictures, it was an, an excuse to wear a really good suit. Prom too. I wanted to wear that suit. Now I won't be able to. Yes, one of yeah. our friends, me and Raisa's friend, um, really likes his prom suit and he doesn't know where to wear it. So he was like, I will come to you guys' prom and like wear my suit again. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about hosting my next podcast in a suit just because I really want to wear it. Because, yeah. <laughs> Nice. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> There's another good thing for EYP. You can wear, wear suits. <laughs> I remember seeing like these guys in suits like who knew everything. I was like, wow, I have to act smart. Like I'm I'm really like scared, but I have to act smart. Suits make you smart. Yeah, that's a fact. Like that's a fact. You see a person in the suit and you say, Okay, this guy's smart. Meanwhile, I was the guy in the suit. So <laughs> Ah high school is over. It's kinda sad, but not really. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but like here in, in prison, like high schools have this like uh, excursion thing they do. They go to like Albania doors, and yeah. most people were excited about it, like really excited. Like I remember, like a month before our our schools closed, like everyone was talking about it, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna get drunk. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that." And now they're just like, "Okay, now we we're gonna open a Zoom meeting, give like." Sunlight in the background, like a, a sea background, and just pretend we're all here. Basically, oh, schools so in Pristina usually go to that uh, excursion during uh, September, yeah, I think. September. I was in Albania in September, so I experienced the ex excursion. <laughs> My school doesn't do that. My school <laughs> goes, goes to Albania during, like, 
May, I think. Yes. Yes, yeah, same here. Every year, not only for the seniors. Yeah. So. Hey, like, how are schools much cooler in Pristina? Like, this isn't fair. <laughs> private school <laughs> it's not i, I they're, they're not much cooler they're basically the same but it's it's just the city and it's it's the big the big city and it's the capital city that's why it looks much cooler because it's not okay it makes sense but as i said you've never heard someone from prison or someone from ja from jacoba doing something amazing it's always a pristine idea yeah, yeah. <laughs> From Jakova doing amazing things, Aran. Oh, oh, I'm really sorry. Okay. I am from Jakova, Aran. <laughs> okay, there you go. You heard it here first. Someone from Jakova making a difference. <laughs> okay. But what I what Where I love. Where do I turn this off? <laughs> but on a serious note, what I love about you guys is that you're all like, till today, you were high school students. You're the same age as me. But you have done like so much, like public speaking wise. Like you've attended like sessions, you've attended programs, you've made gloves. But like, like that's the thing. You're you're kind of an inspiration to teens out there because like when teens see people I like you, so. yeah, I mean it because you're kind of an inspiration to me. Like not gonna lie. <laughs> but like when, so cute. but when teens like around the world hear about this, like a teen did that or a teen like is doing this, is attending this, like they they get this like emotion that fuels them, you know, like well, he he or she can do that. Like why don't I? So I want you guys like, do you have a message for like teens around the world who, who are watching? I hope who have like plans or have like projects or have doubts in themselves about their projects or plans. Do you have anything to say to them? Uh, yes, um, I think they just should follow their dreams uh, despite the problems they might get because um, especially us in Kosovo have many problems regarding free traveling or funding or stuff like that because <clears throat> um, Kosovo is still a new country and um, it's like not fully developed at that point that it can give uh, their young people a chance to like believe in their dreams actually. But I think that if you... Okay, so where was I? Um, as a message, I guess? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. so a message for all the teens that want to like achieve their dreams is just to believe in those because Sometimes you can be in different circumstances that don't actually, like, um, you can see that you will have many difficulties in achieving your dreams, especially if you come from Kosovo, where, you know, Kosovo is like a very new country and um, in its development phase. So we are not, we are still not at that point where we can give all the people a chance to follow their dreams. And lots of youngsters, um, like are hopeless about Kosovo now and they just hope that uh, they get they will become 18 and just leave the country and go work somewhere else where their contribute is like known and um, th they are thanked for giving that contribute to the society while in Kosovo it's not like that all the time but I think that uh, everyone should uh, just follow their dreams uh, despite the uh, different problems they might get on the way and um, people should start more working more about the people in their community and in their country because we need young people here to uh, like give us uh, their experiences and also work for this country so that uh, 20 or 30 years, years from now Kosovo can be like a place where young people actually want to live and to contribute and it can give a chance to everyone. I love, uh, I love the way you think about it, first of all. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. let Teresa finish and I'll give my opinion on that later. Okay. <laughs> Go I ahead. I do agree. I do agree completely with Dea. And I think that um, a lot of uh, young people in Kosovo think that all of their ideas are impossible to, to implement in Kosovo or impossible to do in general. Uh, and I would give a message to all of the people who think that that there are ideas impossible or they think of something they can't do. Uh, I believe in everyone and I think they can always do the impossible and 
uh, even though they're in Kosovo, because uh, when you see uh, Kosovo in a different way, it's a place of opportunities, and mm -hmm. you much uh, you would rather um, you have more space and more time and more uh, things to work on Kosovo. And that's the reason why you should stay in Kosovo and try to do those those impossible things because you have a bigger chance to rise and be something in Kosovo than that you have in, for example, US or Germany or these big states because Kosovo is a need of help, is a need of innovation, is a need of change, and that's where youngsters and new minds have places to change those things and have something to change. Basically, they have they have a lot of op opportunities here that are unseized, and they they should they should really use use that uh, to their advantage and not think that they that Kosovo is not the best place to work. Uh, they should think that it's the best place to work on. Yeah, I like that mindset. By the way, I really like that mindset. It is then. Yeah, I think they yeah, it's the main the main person I I uh, I think that is doing that right now. So basically, she wants to work for Kosovo and she's staying uh, for university in Kosovo because she thinks that way too. I personally want to thank the both of you for one doing an amazing job. I like what you do, debate center projects, being being an inspiration, to be honest. And I also want to thank you guys for joining my podcast as my first guest from outside of prison. I personally <laughs> enjoyed this experience a lot. I loved it. And yes, I loved it. It, yes. was weird. it was very fun. And I hope to see you guys soon. And on this note, I'll gladly end the fourth edition of Pirk's View. This has been Dea Andreessa. Until next time, please tune in.